Okay, so before you get going doing cuts on your CNC from Vetric tool pads, you're going to need to upload some bits so that your machine has the information necessary to command the bit to go where it needs to go. In order to do that, you go over to the tool paths tab over here, find this little icon, the three bits that says display tool database, click that. It's going to open up this window. Yours will probably look very different than this one. We kind of have a stockpile of a lot of different bits that we've used over the years, but you may just have a couple such as the stock ones that uh, Vectric gives you in the beginning. So for this cut, I'm using an Amana Tool V-Bit 60 degree. I know that it's 60 degrees, I know it's a V-Bit, and I know a little serial number that tells me how to find this exact bit. But beyond that, I'm not gonna know most of the specifications needed. So I know it's a V-Bit, so I can find my uh, folder or category that says V-Bits. And if I highlight that and it's all blue, I can go down here and do add a tool under selected tool slash group. That is going to create a new tool underneath VBits and it's gonna keep it nice and categorized for me. So with the information that I know, I know it's a VBit and I know that it's 60 degrees. There are a couple things I can change off the bat. First one being the name. This one says ball nose 1 8 I know that's not true, so I'm gonna go over here and Naming is kind of like with naming toolpaths. It's really whatever you're most comfortable with, whatever you know is going to remind you the best that this is the tool and these are the specifications. So general rule of thumb, it's good to include the angle for a V-bit, the type of bit for sure, um, any other specifying information that could help you find the bit again, and the diameter always helps too. So I know this is a 60... Uh, degree V bit. I know that it is around a one inch diameter and I know that it is Amana Amana RC 1148. So there I have the type of bit, the degree, and some specifying information that will help me out in the future. So I'll press OK, I'm good with that. Notes, uh, I don't have many notes on this one just because I included the RC1148 in the title, but if you don't want that in your title, if you don't want a long title, add any specifying information that will help you find this bit again if something happens to it, if it gets dull or you need a new blade for it. Tool type, this is not a ball nose. As you can see, this is what a ball nose looks like. My bit looks nothing like that, so drop down. And V-bit, that's gonna change a lot of the specification options. You can see under geometry it changed from when it was ball nose, it was just units in diameter, and now with V-bit, it's units, diameter, and included angle. This auto filled to 60 degrees, which is correct, so we don't have to change that. The diameter is different though. I believe mine is about an inch. So I'll put an inch and that, you know, we can always change that. In units up here, we have inches. You could do it in millimeters, but you know, over here in the colonies, I like to do inches. Number of flutes down here, this is a V bit. So it's a little bit different than say an end mill number of flutes, but I know it just has one flute. And I will create settings based off of that. That's gonna create all these other things that uh, need a bit more specification than just guessing or assuming something about the bit. And in order to do that and get the correct specifications, you gotta hop over to your internet browser, open that up, and I've already done this, but you just look up any defining information about the bit that you can. So I knew it was an Amana tool, and I knew the uh, serial number, essentially which is a number that was written directly on the bit. Otherwise, you could look up, you know, the maker, the type of bit, try and find something that's at least close to identical, if not the exact same thing. I know some bits get a little bit lost in, let's say you get one off of Amazon that's, you know, kind of quote unquote off brand and you can't find the specs. You just find something as close as you can, but luckily, 
This is a name brand. Uh, just look up the serial number, which is conveniently on the bit. And you'll see right here, toolstoday.com. They offer great bits and great information around the bits. So I can click on that because that looks exactly like the bit that I have. And this is in fact the same bit because it's a Monotool RC1148. It's a V groove 60 degree. So exactly what I'm looking for. So down here, they have a couple of the specs for me. I know that it's a 60 degree angle. Diameter is one and one sixteenth. So you'll remember back here, I put diameter as one inch. So luckily I did look it up because it's not an inch. It doesn't make the biggest difference with V bits, but it's good to just be precise. So 1.0625. And then we go back here and cutting height, V1, shank, all of this isn't the most necessary for setting these initial tool uh, settings, but we do want to find the feeds and speeds, which is not readily available, except you'll see right here, max RPM is 24,000. That doesn't necessarily mean that's the recommended application RPM. So right down here, we see there's a whole tab, CNC feed and speed. So we click on that and view CNC feed and speed chart, or you can download it if you're not into the whole streaming thing. But I'm gonna stream it and I'll click it and there's actually just a whole sheet. So now we know that this isn't our bit, this isn't our bit, so you just kind of go down until you find the correct serial number, RC1148. Again, yours might be different and you might be using a different bit, which is completely fine. Angle, 60 degree, flutes, one, we got that right, good for us. RPM, this is what it was saying on the other page was max RPM of 24,000. This is saying the recommended RPM is 18,000. So we can go back to our uh, tool database, find uh, spindle speed, and right there, this is already 18,000, but just for posterity, I will put it in again, 18,000 RPM. And go back, let's find some more helpful information. You'll see up here it has different materials, hardwood, softwood, plywood, chipboard, MDF, plastic, foam. This is a hardwood cut and that's primarily what I'm going to be cutting on. So these are the specs that I'll look at. And you'll see feed rate is at uh, 40 inches per minute. That is all good and fine if you're in inches for that setting. However, you'll see down here, feed rate is in millimeters per minute. So that's as easy as just creating a new tab, doing 40 inches to millimeters, and you get uh, 1,016 millimeters for the feed. So just double check your work. Go back inches per minute, 40, yep, 40, okay. And we're gonna go back into here. Go to feed rate, and you can put in 1016. And of course, with feed and speed, these aren't absolute. You can adjust these in UCC and C if you're listening to your cut and you hear chattering or if you think your bit's starting to burn. You can always raise or lower either of these as you wish. But this is just kind of the general recommended baseline what's good to do for this kind of material. So you don't have to mess with plunge rate. That's pretty well... Um, calculated out right there. Feed units, you could change it over to inches, but I'm always used to doing it in millimeters, so easy conversion. And pass depth. This one's a little bit weird, especially for this bit and in, even just for most V bits at large. A typical rule of thumb is that you want to have um, half of your diameter be your pass depth. So if you're using a quarter inch end mill, your pass depth, as in how deep the bit is going per pass into your material, shouldn't be more than half your diameter. This can be different based off of your machine's capabilities, such as with an I2R, if you're using the one horsepower, you want to be a bit more conservative with your pass depth. Or if you're using the two horsepower, you can probably push it a little bit harder. However, with V-bits, since they are kind of just a different animal entirely from end mills, this is a 1 and 1 16th inch diameter, but that does not mean we should necessarily be cutting half an inch deep. So with V-bits, you want to be a bit more conservative, especially with how much they taper off. And this one's even weirder because it's just one blade that's attached to one side of the V-bit. So I'm actually going to change this to 1 8th just to play it a bit more conservatively. 
Um, this information is not going to be on the Amana sheet, but just think of it as a general rule of thumb. Be a bit more conservative with V-bits. Tapered ball noses are kind of the same deal. Um, but then with end mills and things like that, the half diameter is a pretty good rule of thumb. Step over, that's mainly going to affect the cleanliness of your cut. That's not super pertinent for bit health, uh, for the health of your bit, but uh, it will put less strain on the bit the less step over that you have. Step over is essentially like with mowing your lawn. If you were to mow directly next to the line that you just mowed, there's a chance that you're going to miss a little bit of grass in between the two lines, which is why typically you put your mower wheel a little bit into the spot that you had just mowed so that you know you're catching everything. Step over is the same thing. So the lower step over, that's the uh, more that you're kind of leaving your mower in the already mo mowed part. And the more percentage is the more you're pushing it towards what's not been cut already. So it's a big cleanliness thing. The lower step over you have, the longer the cut time, but the more clean of a cut and vice versa. So that's really just kind of uh, personal preference, what you're looking to do at that project at that time. So for now, this is all looking pretty good. Uh, it changed the name on me, which it's always good to double check that it doesn't do that. Sometimes it has its own volition. So I will change this to V bit 60 degree 1.0625 diameter um, Amana RC1148. And add a couple commas in there just to make it a bit neater. That's looking all right, and may as well acknowledge that this is a proper noun, give that a capital, okay. Now all we have to do is just double check all of our stuff, it's looking good, and we can go ahead and press apply. And that has officially created a tool profile for us to use at our convenience when we are making toolpaths. So now just press okay, and get to making the toolpath.